Hello friends, I'm Mike, the Hi-Fi fanatic behind Audio Architects. For those who are already subscribed, it's good to see you back for more. If you're a first timer and you're into speakers, amplifiers, CD players, good music, pretty much all things audio, you're in the right place. It would be best if you stuck around just for a bit because I am gonna lay out the golden blueprint on what to look for when shopping for a CD player. Notice I just said CD player and not new CD player. Well, there is much to be desired from the used market. I recently put out a video talking about the Magnavox CDB473. The player is well over 30 years old and can not only compete with brand new CD players, but can outperform them. Let's get started on the three most important things to consider when choosing your new disc spinner. Choosing between a CD player or a CD transport will be one of the biggest decisions when selecting your disc spinner. I recently released a video discussing this topic in much more depth. Hit it. You have two options. You can get a CD player with an analog output stage and its own digital to analog converter. Sometimes this is risky business because even many carefully engineered CD players marketed today fail to properly involve and entertain listeners due to their inadequate analog stages. Selecting a CD transport takes that out of the equation and it just has a digital output that then goes to your DAC or integrated amplifier. My advice would be to find a CD player with a great analog output stage and use the digital out. Most of them will have some type of digital output, whether it's a digital coaxial out or an optical out. This allows you to switch from one to another depending on the situation and what you wanna do. If you have an external streamer, you will likely have an external DAC that you're already comfortable with. I personally like having the option. Whatever you choose, know that you'll have to live with it. All right, guys, let's be honest with ourselves. Our budgets will heavily influence our purchasing decisions. If you know how much you want or can spend on a CD player, you can drastically narrow down your options depending on your budget for this purchase. CD players can range from 300 bucks to over six figures. So there is something special for every budget. Now, just because you're a millionaire, does that mean you should invest in the top tier six figure toys? Probably not. At that point is when I do believe the laws of diminishing returns could make a case against the purchase that grandiose. There are a lot of excellent companies that are transparent, provide value to their customers, and deliver a solid product that you will be happy with for many, many years to come. However, there are companies out there in the ether of the audio world that will overprice their products to give the illusion of luxury and prestige without even de delivering a sonic, a solid sonic performance. You have to know how to sniff these out. Usually you will know because you'll get that, mm, that gut feeling. However, if the company you are looking into is you know, making claims that seem too good to be true, they probably are, and you should do more research about them in forums and online, or perhaps avoid them altogether. If you are in the 1000 and under club, you could find an excellent player, new or used, and not have any issues with sound quality. Some of my favorite players are well under $1,000. Cambridge Audio and Rotel, just to name a few, have some great offerings in that price range. I'll link it down below. If you want to get a bit more serious, Premier and Lingdorf, to name a couple, have CD players and transports that sound fantastic in the $1,200 to $3,000 range. If I were in the financial state to spend some serious scratch on a CD player, I'd probably consider offerings by like Griffin Audio and Hegel that have been, you know, just calling my name. Remember though, the psychology of pricing could persuade you to make a remorseful purchase decision since pricing drives the perception of cost and value. Don't fall into the snake pit. Always trust your ears and if you are unsure, 
Ask the Audio Community. That's what we're here for. So I combined technology and sound quality because I feel they go hand in hand. I could have made this, you know, four reasons, but the components inside a CD player or a transport could make the most significant difference in the sound quality you receive from your player. A well-designed player from a notable engineering team can merge the principles between science and art, creating a sonic masterpiece. A great engineer can create a unique product that sounds fantastic using a weaker technological base than perhaps some of its more expensive counterparts. A lot of expertise is required to design a system in which all the elements come together in a way that achieves the desired level of performance that you're looking for in a great player or transport. In this case, it's all about how they implement the components they are working with and how they execute the final output stage before going to your preamp or amplifier. Perhaps this is why many people buy CD players and only use a digital output, essentially just using it as a CD transport. When these players have inadequate analog stages, your external deck can honestly sound significantly better than what's offered within the player itself. You also can't negate the fact that the transport is also of prime importance. A CD transport is, in my opinion, a phenomenon of intricate moving parts which need to be positioned precisely and continuously within fractions of a micron. With sophisticated servo control circuitry and complex digital processing systems, so choosing a player that has been properly engineered from the ground up, from start to finish, is absolutely paramount when selecting your future disc spinner. I recently reviewed the Rotel CD11 Tribute, which the late Ken Ishiwata redesigned. To my utter amazement, its analog output sounded much better than actually using it as a transport with my external DAC. If I had used a higher end DAC, the results could have very well been different, guys. However, the DAC I used, the Denifrips Ares 2, is a well respected and an all around great DAC. This, at least for me, proves that when the engineer puts time into thoroughly testing the product before launch, you could get a su surprisingly great sonic experience from their hard work. For me, Eliminating the external DAC altogether is my favorite way to listen to a CD player for a couple of reasons. One, I want as little as possible within my signal chain just to avoid any unnecessary coloration uh, of the sound as well as excessive noise from having an extra component in the mix of things. Another reason is I like to hear the differences between the CD players I come across. It's actually fun for me, at least, to listen to the engineer's you know, interpretation of how they wanted the original recordings to be consumed. How do you know the player you buy is one of these well-engineered unicorns? <laughs> Especially if you're staying under a specific budget? Well, let, let's say the thousand dollar mark. There are a couple things you can do. The first is you could research the unit online. Do your due diligence and hope for the best taking the word of others, or you're gonna have to listen to it personally, either at a hi-fi shop, a hi-fi show, or just buy it directly. If it's not up to snuff, just return it. If the CD player is well built and you have matched it with a great set of components, the sound quality should be dynamic, detailed, and more than often a better performer than streaming. I hope this video helped give some clarity and direction when purchasing a CD player. As I mentioned, you don't have to go new. You can go used and save a lot of money. However, when you choose the used route, you could run into some issues, such as not having a warranty for one, can't return it, you know, what's done is done, as well as rolling the dice on the lifespan of the player itself. However, like I said, I have the Magnavox CDB473, which sounds incredible, as it in, and it's in, you know, good working order. It's a coin toss that could very well go your way or not. Don't count out estate sales and thrift stores because you could find diamonds in the rough during your search. After all, it's all about the thrill of the hunt when searching for a used 
uh, CD player or hi-fi gear in general. Thank you all for joining me. If you're already subscribed, thank you. I have an online shop where I sell audio inspired t-shirts. This is one of them, the VU meter. Uh, there's hoodies and other merch to help support the channel. I encourage you to check it out, buy some stuff and offer ideas for future designs, you know, which would be cool. If you're new to my channel and like it so far, I encourage you to check out some of my other videos to see if my vibe in my channel is right for you. And I would love for you at that point to hit that thumbs up and end up subscribing and joining me on my journey in hi-fi. Thank you again for spending some time with me. Take care and we will see you next time.